Okay, everyone who has joined us, thank you so much. Glitch has been fixed. Uh, today's presentation was going to be with Dr. Debbie Taraka. She is regrettably under the weather, but you are going to have the pleasure of hearing about this wonderful subject. Uh, and you're going to hear about it from Dr. Deirdre Caramonte, who received her DVM from Tufts University School of Veterinary Medicine. She is a diplomat of the American College of Veterinary Internal Medicine and uh, was the director of the Tina Santee Flaherty Rehabilitation and Fitness Unit at Animal Medical Center. Dr. Caramonte is certified in canine and equine rehabilitation and acupuncture. Current interests are in the fields of rehabilitation, obesity, and geriatrics. Currently, Dr. Caramonte is the president of the Veterinary Medical Association of New York City, and she is the director of clinical education at the CC Animal Health. And uh, people should go on mute because I'm hearing a background. We welcome Dr. Caramonte. Hello. Thank you, everybody. Sorry about the glitch. So we're going to talk about how to safely exercise young dogs and puppies. Uh, if we can advance the next slide. So talking about breed is actually pretty important. Um, for starters, a bulldog puppy and a border collie puppy will both love playtime, but differently. The border collie will probably have a higher exercise tolerance than a bulldog, not to mention on a day like today, depending on where you are, a higher heat tolerance for outdoor play. And breed size matters too. There have been studies that show potential links between too much exercise and orthopedic disease and large breed dogs. So even though your eight week old Great Dane puppy can keep up with you on a two mile walk, um, it's probably not a great idea. And most people wouldn't even consider taking a smaller breed puppy like a Yorkie for a hike that long. Uh, they have higher energy levels. So unfortunately the larger breeds can fool us into thinking they need longer walks. So learning about your breed is a good place to start. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Um, one thing I, I think I forgot to mention is all breeds require mental stimulation almost as much as physical stimulation. Uh, some of the high drive working breeds such as Belgian Malinois, Border Collies, German Shepherds need much more mental stimulation than other breeds. All right, so very important, no matter where you live, uh, teach your puppy how to walk on a leash. Begin with short walks, taking frequent breaks. Increase the length of the walk gradually and consistency is key. The good news is that puppies love to play. They love to romp around with each other, chase tails, wrestle and tug, and they can sort of self-regulate. And this is really good because it provides a lot of variety for exercise in their pups. Uh, so uh, going back to the stimulation part, uh, we want to vary the type of activities that your puppy is doing. So if the weather is warm, you can take your puppy swimming. Uh, you can walk on different services like tall grass, wooded areas. If you're going to walk on sidewalks, make sure the pavement is not too hot and get them familiar in new environments. Definitely, if you can, find puppy play groups and obedience classes. Introduce them to new toys and games. Uh, when I was first starting out in veterinary medicine decades ago, it was always do not take your dog outside, do not let them play with other dogs um, until they are fully vaccinated. But those are sort of the toddler and teen years all wrapped up together, those 8, 12, 16 weeks. And if you shelter those dogs during that time, you're going to ask, be asking for uh, obedience issues later on. Okay, if we go to slide four, the mental stimulation. So mix things up, uh, make it a game. Mental stimulation is very important to happiness. And some agree that actually mental exercise will tire a dog more physically than physical exercise. Um, dog needs obedience training, they need sports. There's a whole new um, uh, selection of puzzles, food puzzles, games, cubes they can roll around. Um, and even good things to chew on can sometimes stimulate them mentally if they have to grab them with their paws and sort of uh, orientate them in the right direction. Now we know if they're not stimulated enough through physical and verbal interaction with learning and rewarding good behavior, the dogs are gonna do it themselves through chewing, barking, digging, and jumping. And again, going back to those high energy dogs, often need much more mental stimulation than their counterparts. They're not just fulfilled sitting and playing fetch with a few toys or chewies. So if we can go to slide number five, and if you can play that movie, this is a very adorable little um, poodle mix. 
uh, teach them to play with a flirt pole like this and ultimately to fetch, keeping it pretty low impact. Is that movie working? Yep. It's cute, right? Very cute. All right, moving on to slide six. Do a lot of recall games to incorporate both exercise, training, and obedience. You can toss food away from you. Sometimes it's easier if you have two people. Let the puppy run for it. Um, you can run backwards and call the puppy to you if you're doing it solo. Um, but this is really good for the recall sort of reward aspect of positive reinforcement. And then the next slide, slide seven, puppy games on a low surface, very good way to obedience. If you wanna put them in a sit stay someplace, they get into their spot um, and stay there until release is really important. Okay, moving on to slide eight. So why are we so concerned about the amount of exercise puppies get? So it's really a question of growth plates. So what are the growth plates? The growth plates are the areas of developing cartilage found at the ends of the dog's long bones. They're typically made of cartilage when the puppy is born and gradually they calcify and transform into denser bone as the puppy matures. Prior to that, growth plates are very vulnerable to being injured and potentially fractured because they are the last portion of the bones to harden. This is a really important thing. An injury to the, any of the puppy's legs during this time may result in loss of damage and potential deformity. An injury to a growth plate may result in damaged cells that will stop growing on one side, but on the side where it's healthy will continue to grow, and that will end up with a result of a deformed limb. It's vitally important that, before, that all the growth of bones is synchronized and it happens at the same rate. One of the more common areas uh, for this to happen is the elbow because three bones come together, the ulna, the radia, and the humerus. And a lot of times the ulna is injured just because of where it is located and it'll stop growing while the radius keeps growing and that will cause a bow to the legs. So really, 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 we wanna keep our exercise in check. We can move to slide nine. So when do puppy growth plates close? Well, again, breed dependent and a lot of them. Most growth takes place when the puppy is between four to eight months of age. After the age of eight months, there's minimal longitudinal growth of bones going on. By one year, most growth plates are used and no longer will show up on the x-ray. Except some of those large giant breed dogs, the growth plates may remain open until about 18 to 20 months of age. So it's always a good idea to talk to your vet before starting puppy on any rigorous exercise. All right, so what kind of exercise can we do? If we move on to slide number 10, it talks about contraction types. In an isometric muscle contraction, the muscle fires, but there's no movement of a joint. So these are exercises done in a static position. The opposite of that is isotonic, where the muscle shortens or lengthens as the dog below is lifting weights. He's actually doing something to change the length of the muscles. If we move on to slide 11, a three-legged stance is an excellent example of an isometric exercise. It's really good for core strength and balance. The handler in this case, me, is just lifting the leg, but I'm not holding the weight of the dog. The dog is balancing through his core to all the three other legs. And then you would just rotate the legs that you pick up and go around the dog. A little more advanced on slide 12 is the paraleg standing, so holding up opposite limbs really, really good for flexibility and strengthening the core, the neck, and the trunk. Now, a simple exercise and also just a fun game everybody likes to play on uh, slide 13, paw shakes. And that is Alpha, a nice big Bernese Mountain dog uh, who's working on core strengthening and elbow flexion at the same time, and he doesn't even know it. All right, are we ready for slide 14? Cookie stretches. So cookie stretches is a strengthening and flexibility exercise. So the more flexible the dog is, uh, the muscles need to be lengthened longer and longer and longer. So you could put the cookie at the shoulder. You can put the cookie at the hip. You can also put the cookie down on the floor, uh, on the front limb 
can put the cookie away um, by the back foot and repeat on both sides. And this is really a good, um, and notice that the tech is holding the dog in between the legs so it can't um, move and circle around. It's just working on flexibility. Okay, next slide, Cavaletti Rails. And this is, I put this in, not because I think that every dog needs to go through Cavaletti Rails, but it's one of the exercises, and this is exactly why football players run through tires at uh, football practice, is that we are training the neural, um, neural connections that dog, when the dog walks or humans walk, they don't really pay attention, like saying, hey, I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. But with this, it's like, hey, I have to step over this. Hey, I have to step over this. So there's a connection from the paw up to the spinal cord, up to the brain about, look, I have to lift my leg higher. And if you look at this cute Cavalier uh, Charles Spaniel, you see how much height she has in her knee and her hock to get that paw over the Cavaletti rail. Really, really good. And you don't need to get Cavaletti rails. You can use broom handles. You can use a ladder, um, even walking in uh, shallow water or through tall grass, anything that makes them sort of think about where they're placing their feet. It's a really good exercise. And slide number 16, sit to stands or stand to sit. Uh, just a really good exercise for one, obedience, because when you're out in public uh, and more and more places are becoming uh, dog friendly, uh, outdoor cafes, especially with uh, all this COVID stuff, people eating outside more, uh, we can bring our dogs more places. So it's really important that they're well behaved though. So sit to stands, really good for front limb and hind limb flexibility of all the joints and core strength to do that. So what are some things that we can do if we think our puppies or young dogs are tired, a little overworked, or maybe injured? Well, slide 17, uh, massage. And through various techniques, systematic massage can increase uh, blood flow and lymphatic flow to break down any muscle uh, metabolism byproducts. Uh, and through sensory input to the peripheral nerves, it can actually achieve central relaxation up to the spinal cord and the brain. This is a really great way not only to bond with your puppy, but um, you begin to learn all the anatomy of your dog. You also know not every dog is perfect, every, not every body is perfect, but you can inspect and feel the joints and the limbs um, and make sure that everything feels good, nice, um, soft to the touch. Now, if there is some type of acute injury on slide 18, uh, what is the best thing to do? Well, best is ice. If they are holding up their limb, if something is going on, um, ice decreases muscle spasm and pain by decreasing actually the metabolism, which causes, which acts as irritants. Um, it inhibits inflammatory mediators, and this all results in pain relief. So any type of ex acute exacerbation, uh, they fall on something, they trip over something, um, applying ice is really a good idea. Now, there are not a lot of things that have undergone research uh, for puppies and growth plates, but um, the Assisi loop on uh, slide 19 is actually been used for years and years and years on children. Uh, so I hope that they actually uh, serve as a good uh, guinea pig for our dogs and cats. Uh, but pulsed electric magnetic field therapy encompasses an immense spectrum, making it almost impossible for anyone to actually differentiate among the multitude of devices offered on the market. But what it is, is an, elect an electromagnetic waveform delivered by antenna that cannot be felt. It's actually one one hundredth of a cell phone signal. So you can't hear a cell phone signal, you can't hear or feel this. And all the different technologies are differentiated by the uh, waveforms that they emit. So if you look at that CC loop, the white and black part, the dongle where the battery is, that actually generates the waveform. And then the black loop part is the antenna. Um, the um, precursor, the grandfather to this technology is the bone growth stimulator, which is FDA cleared in humans. And uh, over the years, OCC has perfected its signal and our research actually does mimic the human research. 
it increases nitric oxide production, um, increasing blood flow, decreasing swelling and pain, and also decreases the need for opioids. So it is actually a very safe technology to use uh, really in all um, ages. One of the reasons why you can't use other modalities or other pulsed electromagnetic field therapy devices, the thought is that they all generate heat. This OCC loop does not generate heat and heat will damage uh, the growing growth plates. So the OCC signal is not an issue. So I like that technology. Uh, it's good if you talk to your vet and get a prescription for one. Uh, you can use it at home in case uh, after you use your ice therapy, you can use your loop therapy if they have um, an injury. 